We have an indescribably, incomprehensibly great God who has looked upon a sinfully depraved people and sent a scandalously merciful Savior. And as a result, we have. We have an indescribably urgent mission. The grace of God evokes the surrender of man. Whom shall I send and who will go for us? The Lord pronounces in Isaiah 6. And Isaiah rises up and says, Here am I, send me. That is the only possible response to a God who says your guilt is taken away and your sin is atoned for. Surely this kind of mercy evokes more than raising a hand and reciting a prayer. Surely this kind of mercy evokes unconditional, urgent surrender of our lives to making the word of this God known wherever he calls, no matter how tough it is. We don't have time to dive into the end of Isaiah chapter 6 with those Verses that talk about the assignment that would be put on Isaiah and for the years to come, all that he would experience and how at the end of his life, tradition has it that he would be imprisoned and tortured and likely sawed in two. But it is worth it. It is worth it to represent this God and to declare his work. Is there anything more important to give our lives to than the representation and declaration of this God's glory to the ends of the earth? Don't miss it. A high view of God and a humble view of the gospel inevitably leads to an urgent view of mission. I, I'll close with this. I, I want to tell you a, a story that I am not proud of. Um, I, was, I was in an unreached area of the world, and we were hiking into these unreached villages, and these villages are unreached for a reason. They're difficult to get to, and for generations have subsisted with no knowledge of the gospel. Generation after generation. And, and we were hiking, and it was long, tough days, and we were taking literature into these different places, and it was risky. And one night we had set up for camp, just out in the middle of nowhere in the mountains, and we had gotten there kind of early, and so I had some time to go off to the side with the book that I had with me, I'd taken a copy of Tozer's Knowledge of the Holy. And I sat down on the mountain, I looked over the countryside, and the thought that came to my mind, I thought to myself, look at all we're doing, like, the Lord must really be glad to have me on his team. And I opened up Tozer's book, and that day I just happened to be in his chapter on the self-sufficiency of God. And this is what Tozer said. Almighty God, just because he is almighty, needs no support. The picture of a nervous, ingratiating God fawning over men to win their favor is not a pleasant one. Yet if we look at the popular conception of God, that is precisely what we see. 20th century Christianity, Tozer said, has put God on charity. So lofty is our opinion of ourselves that we find it quite easy, not to say enjoyable, to believe that we are necessary to God. Probably the hardest thought of all for our natural egotism to entertain is that God does not need our help. We commonly represent him as a busy, eager, somewhat frustrated father hurrying about seeking help to carry out his benevolent plan to bring peace and salvation to the world. Too many missionary appeals are based upon this fancied frustration of Almighty God. 
An effective speaker can easily excite pity in his hearers, not only for the heathen, but for the God who has tried so hard and so long to save them and has failed for want of support. I fear that thousands of people enter Christian service from no higher motive than to help deliver God from the embarrassing situation his love has gotten him into and his limited abilities seem unable to get him out of. Add to this a certain degree of commendable idealism and a fair amount of compassion for the underprivileged, and you have the true drive behind much Christian activity today. Brothers and sisters, this God does not involve us in ministry and mission ultimately because he needs us. This God involves us in ministry and mission because he loves us. And because this sovereign God has chosen to pour out his sovereign grace through his dear son our servant. We are compelled to say to this God, my life, the church that you've entrusted to me, yours to spend for your name's sake among all peoples. God, we know that we are not necessary to you. You are incomprehensibly great with or without us. We are sinfully depraved and prone to think highly of ourselves. And you have saved us with such scandalous mercy. So God, we say, in this room, here we are, send us. Not because you need us, but because you love us. And we, by your grace, love you and delight in you and adore you and want your glory known among all peoples. So toward that end, we preach and we lead and we live and we pray in Jesus name.